Joining us today is David Hellman from Fox Sports, where he covers the Dallas Cowboys. You can follow him on Twitter at David Hellman underscore or underscore David Hellman. What is it? How, how do you do it exactly? The underscore goes after, but the fact that you have to ask means it's not a good handle. So maybe I should look into changing that. Yeah, I think you should get rid of the underscore. Nobody nobody likes the underscore Twitter handles, David, unless it's between the first and the last name. That's the only time it's acceptable, I think. I did. I don't think I had a choice, and it was either like an underscore or a bunch of numbers, and nobody liked that either, so... That's true. I guess you're just screwed, ultimately, is what I'm trying to tell you. But you know who is not screwed? Uh, The Dallas Cowboys. Even though they lost this game, there's still a lot of positive things to take out of this one against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Today, we're going to talk about just the 53-man roster, some guys who maybe have played their way on the roster, played their way off, guys that uh, we still don't know about. Uh, So I'm going to ask you about three players today, and, and you get to name them, get to identify them yourself. But the first one, who is the guy you think that through this process, training camp into the preseason games, has gone from somebody that was on the bubble to you think is firmly on the 53 right now? Okay, see if you follow me here, because the the brutal reality of, of roster trimming is like in a given camp, there's only like seven or eight spots that are actually up for grabs, right? Like it's yeah. really – it's a lot less uh, juicy than it sounds. And so what, we're halfway through training camp? I don't really think you can definitively say – there's somebody that has cemented himself onto the roster. Like Deuce Vaughn maybe comes to mind, but I think we all agree Deuce Vaughn was going to be on this roster no matter what. As long as he showed a modicum of the ability to play, he was going to be on the team. But a guy that comes to mind who I wasn't sure about before camp, who I really feel sure about right now is Devin Harper. Uh, The second-year, seventh-round pick uh, linebacker, I believe, out of Oklahoma State. You got it. Yeah. Um, I really really think that is a guy that you can probably write in pen. And I was thinking about it uh, watching the game. You know, he had a a nice second half, played really well with the time that he got. He already played a lot on special teams as a rookie, and that's another thing that he can do really well. Coaches love linebackers who can do things like play a bunch of special teams. They got the big body for the blocking and physicality that is required of it, and they've got the speed to run down the field and chase people. So I know it's not the sexiest answer, but coming into camp, I was like, I I really don't know about this Devin Harper. And uh, just after watching a couple weeks of camp in a preseason game, I'm like, oh, yeah, the coaches will find a use for this guy for sure. So that's somebody who has potentially played himself on, uh, who may have been on the bubble. Who is somebody that you feel like was a a bubble guy that as of this moment in time, and things could still change, but as of this moment in time, they're on the outside looking in? I'm curious about what's going on at tight end um, because there's so little in the way of proven commodities. Now, of course, we know Jake Ferguson is going to be there, and we know Luke Schoonmaker is going to be there just by virtue of being a rookie. Um, but after that, it's really interesting. You know, there's now, I think you have to say now there's three guys because John Stevens Jr. All of a sudden you don't want to write him onto the roster after one good preseason game. I think people make that mistake every year, but he's clearly, he's incredibly athletic. He's got ball skills that matters for tight ends. Uh, we just saw actually the Cowboys have an interesting history of putting undrafted rookies at tight end onto their roster. Peyton Hendershot did it last year. Yep. Sean McCune did it three years ago. So now you have Peyton Hendershot, Sean McCune, and I would throw in John Stevens Jr. There's no guarantee they keep more than uh, three tight ends. And even if they keep four, somebody's on the outside looking in. And either way, I think it's interesting because I don't think Peyton Hendershot is guaranteed a roster spot. John McCune has now been on the team for three years and is now fighting for a roster spot. And now you've got this new rookie, John Stevens Jr. These are all three interesting players. I can't imagine all three of them make the team and maybe even only one of them does. Um, So when it's all said and done, I think a tight end is not going to make this team that's going to make you go, oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly who it is just yet, but I have my eye on the back end of the tight end depth chart. 
And then finally, is there anybody, you know, every year there's a Dan Bailey type cut, uh, not, not to that level necessarily, but somebody who, you know, when we entered camp, you didn't necessarily think that they were going to be in jeopardy and not even necessarily somebody that's not going to make the roster. But is there anybody that at the start of camp you hadn't considered a bubble player that now you're kind of wondering, oh, this guy, he, he might be fighting for a roster spot here? Again, um, it's a lot less juicy than people want to make it out to be. And, and this is why I say this, because the Cowboys love their draft picks. This is yep. a draft and develop team. You have to really be bad to not make the roster as a rookie draft pick. It's very rare. Even if you're like a late round pick, it's very rare for this front office to cut you as a rookie because they're counting on young, cheap talent developing into good players over the course of their contract. Uh, so I say that to say I go into every preseason expecting all of the draft picks to make it. And I would still lean that way. But, and and I don't want to overreact much to one preseason game, but you look at the performance of a guy like Eric Scott Jr., the sixth round um, cornerback out of Southern Miss, and you're like, oh man, he he might have – ways to go he might have some developing to do and that's fine but the problem is the Cowboys are actually really loaded in their secondary uh they're about as talent rich in the secondary as I can ever remember be uh, remember them being they've got four veteran corners they've got two other highly drafted guys like Kelvin Joseph and Nishan Wright to worry about CJ Goodwin is still hanging around as a special teams ace that that John Fossil might talk them into keeping and then they've got like seven intriguing safeties. Uh, so you look at the numbers and you're like, man, how does Eric Scott make this team if he doesn't have a, like a great rest of camp? So I'm not trying to cut the guy right now, um, but that's something that, that kind of made my eyebrows go up where I'm like, well, they got a lot of bodies and I don't know if you can justify keeping a guy just because he's a rookie. David Hellman does great work covering the Cowboys for Fox Sports. You can follow him on Twitter at David Hellman underscore. Don't forget the underscore. You won't be able to find him otherwise. Dave, we appreciate you, man. Anytime, buddy. 